Hello everyone. In this video, we'll explain the purpose and use of the main configuration file, the master file, uh, which we usually name ore.xml. It is called the master file because it contains general setup information, uh, mainly which input files to take and where to take them from. That's going to be chapter one. Which market configuration to use, if there's more than one, that's chapter two. And what type of calculation you like to perform and where to output them, that's going to be chapter three. Now let's take a look at the structure of the file. First of all, you notice that the file has an opening and a closing root element, ORE. Then it has three sections, um, setup, market, and analytics. In the setup mode, the first parameter has the attribute as of date, and it means that each master file is only applicable to one valuation date. The following parameters determine where the inputs will be located from and where the outputs will be produced. You can give it a relative pass, like this, relative to where the master file is located. Or you can give it an absolute pass, like this, although only this deals in absolute. Then there are uh, the pass to each input file. You can see seven of them here. Uh, those are the mandatory ones. And there are a few additional ones, such as the dividend data file, the calendar adjustment, currency configuration, reference data, and IBO fallback config. And each of them will have their own video where we'll explain their purpose and use. And same as for the parameters above, you can give it absolute or relative pass. Um, now, the relative pass is not relative to the master file, it's actually relative to the input pass given here. To make it clearer on how to use all those input files, depending on your needs, I will show you three simplified examples of architecture. There is the standard case, where each input file is linked to a single master file. Um, this is the case, for example, in the with the equity option with implied variety example video, uh, which is already available. You have one master file and each um, input file is linked to it. You may also need to set up multiple users or multiple calculations um, where you have some of the inputs in common. Um, here in that case, it's going to be the pricing engine to this market, curve config, and for one given day market data and fixing, and then all the different users or all the different calculations will access the same files. And a good example of it is when you look at the example folder in the repository, um, this is how it is structured, and we will show it in this video at the end of chapter two. Or you might want to perform a calculation on multiple days on the same portfolio. Uh, in that particular case, you'll have a common folder com containing the portfolio, pricing and join, today's market and curve config, and each master file, given it at its own valuation date, will call its own set of market data and fixing. There are three more parameters in the setup node. We have the pass to the log file. We have the verbosity of the log file. The accepted values are the following. You have one for alerts, two for critical alerts, four for error, eight for warnings, etc. The 255 means we don't filter any of the, um, of the loggings and it will display all of the above. You can see here, different level of verbosity. Um, one, two, four has nothing displayed because there's no alert with the, the current calculation. Log eight only has warning. Log 16, just notice. 32, debug, data, memory. And here you can see we have um, uh, all of the above. And as a final mandatory note, um, you have the imply to this fixing which when set to N, or no, it will try to load the fixing from the files in order to build all term structures. And when set to Y, oh yes, it will imply them. And this can be useful when pricing or bootstrapping of hypothetical market data, for example, in scenario analysis or stress testing. There are also three additional optional parameters. Uh, the first one, observation model, this one's a bit more technical, and I invite you to take a look at um, the documentation here. 
it has to do with performance and how some of the calculation are re-triggered when market and fixing changes. Um, it, it would deserve its own video. It, and for small and one-off calculation, it won't matter too much. Then you have the lazy market building node. With this option, you can choose to either build every single curve at the beginning of the calculation. Um, that's the case when it's set to false. And when set to true, which is the default behavior, the build of the curve is delayed until they are actually cold, um, which can improve performance when not all the curve configured are used. And finally, you have continue on error. When it's set to true, the application will not exist when an error happens, and it will try, if it's possible, of course, to continue the processing. If not given, the parameters uh, default to false. Setting it to true is actually quite useful when you have, for example, a lot of trades to price, and that takes a lot of time, and you don't want the whole process to stop after just um, one error uh, because of one trade. The market section is used when you want to specify your own market configuration in five different um, situations. You have, of course, the standard pricing. There are also three types of calibration that you can perform here. Um, for the interest rates, it is here um, specified as the LGM calibration, the linear ghost Markov model, which is a market standard market model for interest rate. And if you want to know more about the model, there's actually a whole chapter in a book written by the founders of a company at the link provided here. Uh, there's the FX calibration and the equity calibration. And then there is the um, simulation, which is used when you want to build exposure simulation, for example, uh, in the case of um, CVA, DVA, KVA, etc. And these configurations have to be defined in the today's market file, which will be explained in more detail in another video. The configuration node looks like this. And the one which is specified in the ORE.xml file is the one which is going to be called here. If you don't need multiple configuration, and that's the case in the today's market file here, you don't even need to create a configuration node. And it's also worth noting that you don't even need to give it an ID name for all of these nodes. Now, there are some cases when it's actually useful to use different configuration. For example, when the curve you want to use for calibration are different than the one you want to use for pricing. By setting the pricing configuration to default, we are, without any surprise, just saying that we want um, to use um, the default configurations um, with no override whatsoever. And by setting LGM calibration configuration to library, for example, we are essentially saying that we want to override discounting curve ID and yield curve ID in this particular example. For all the other um, type of market data and curve, we'll be using the default one still. And you can see into this market that uh, the, the curve used will be different. Um, with default, we call for OXIS Euro, which we'll call um, a EOS discounting curve for the euro, for example. And the LIBOR will call the NC, NCCI swap, which will discount using a euro six month curve. Another situation where having multiple configuration might be useful is when you have multiple users, but a common repository of market data and curve that you want to build. Um, and that's pretty much how a bank would operate, right? Um, this is also how all the example work in the example folder from the repository that uh, you have downloaded. So if we go into the example folder, you can see a series of examples and we have common um, input files, um, that we do this market pricing engine, the market fixing curve config. And each example will have its own master file and its own trade, which is here. Finally, the analytics block. Today we'll only talk about the let's say vanilla analytics, such as the NNPV, cash flow, curve, additional results, and today's market calibration. The rest of them, like value at risk or XVA, they will be explained in subsequent videos. All analytics have in common uh, a couple of fields. 
there's the active fill, which literally just say if it's uh, going to be run or not. And there's the output file name, which works in, once again, in a similar way as the one above with an absolute or relative pass. And the relative pass is relative to the output folder defined here. Now let's look at this analytics uh, a little bit more in detail. For NPV, you can choose the reporting currency and there's already a video available describing how to set up a pricing where the reporting currency is different from the trade currency. If we open the file, for example, this is for a, an equity option. Um, you can see the trade ID, what type of trade it is, the maturity, time to maturity, the NPV in the trade currency. So here it's euro. And you so also have the, the NPV in the base currency that you set up in the, the master file. You have the national in the, the trade currency, the national currency um, in USD here. And you also have usually information about the netting set or the counterparty. For the cash flow, we'll take a look at the ones in the example one of the, in the repository. So here you can see that it's a fixed VS floating swap with um, the first leg here, the second leg, the floating leg here. The first few fields are quite um, self-explanatory with the number of cash flows, uh, the pay date type of flow. So here interest, that's the that's a coupon payment. And here it's a, uh, a river payment. You can see here the currency the amount paid. So this will be, uh, the amount will be, for example, the fixed coupon time, the national, and here will be the library plus spread if there is time national. The accrual, this is to take into account um, any uh, weekends. So you can see here, they all paid on the 1st of March. And here you have accrual slightly different, which probably means that the, the 1st of March 2020 was a, uh, a Sunday. The accrued amount will be used, for example, when you want the dirty price um, of a bond. Then you have the fixing date and fixing value. Um, you can notice, for example, here that the fixing date for this cash flow is probably two business days before the actual accrual start of the, the period. You have the notional discount factor. The present value is the amount of the cash flow time the discount factor. And then after you have um, a few fields relative to flaws and cap, which will be discussed when we actually sing those type of trades. Next, we have um, the curves. Um, now the curves, it exports all the yield curve that have been built according to the specification in today's market file. You've got the configuration node where you can tell which configuration do you want to display. And it works in a very similar way as the configuration we talked about in chapter two. And then you have the grid node where you specify the size of your grid and the time step um, taken. Let's open the curve file. So you can see that we have all our yield curve here. Um, Euro USD, this, we saw the discount curve, the Euro um, it's using the Euro Union as discount proof, so that's why they are um, similar. You'll also notice that you have 240 rows, each of them with a one month interval as specified in the um, grid node. The next analytic is the additional results. And this one provides some sort of um, aggregated variables I use for pricing. Uh, here you can see, for example, the discount factor, the forward that has been used, um, the risk-free discount or the volatility. Those are very specific to equity option. And then you have the analytic to this market calibration, which provide information on the build of the T0 market. Here we can see some information about the, the interest rate and at the bottom, some information about the equity volatility and the equity curve. This is the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. I'd encourage you to watch some of the videos showcasing examples of pricing to understand how to put this in practice. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.